Alright, so this is the table that I got that was like 10 bucks that has been a perfect steal. I'm sanding it down now. I've already sanded the top and the sides and kind of rounded the corners. Because it's kind of like a peel wood underneath. Or wood underneath. I don't know what this material is. But anyways, um, sanded all that. Wiped it down. And we're doing the contact paper on that. And now I'm sanding the bottom legs for Lauren to paint. Just so it'll take a little bit better because it's kind of a like a smooth panel surface like uh, i'm not sure what that is okay christina took a clip on her phone to show you the sanding but look how good she did i know you probably can't tell as much not in person but she made it super smooth rounded the corners for us yep so. sanded it so now it's pretty much ready we're just gonna fill in this little gap with some putty or something but yeah I it feels really smooth yeah i i did it very in like I did a lot on top to make it as smooth as possible on the legs. I just did enough to get it to where you could, that it'll grip the paint when she puts it on there. But for the most part, the legs were just... It already looks like a whole new table, I feel like. Got it all set up for Linda to paint. letting it dry so we're gonna do another coat and dry out she's being very helpful with her popcorn <laughs> she helped me with the second coat we're gonna do one more after dinner and hopefully that'll be sufficient looks pretty good all right guys we are finally putting on the marble contact paper onto the table. So the very first thing that we're doing here is Christina is measuring the width of the table so that we can find the middle point so that when we overlap the contact paper we can have the seam be perfectly in the middle. And once she found the middle point I'm just going in with like a pencil and I'm marking on the table the midway point all the way down the table so that we can try to keep the contact paper as straight as possible as we're placing it down because it does shift a little when you're pushing it so we wanted to have little checkpoints along the way to make sure we were staying centered. Then we're just rolling this out and eyeballing how much we're going to need for the length so that we can go ahead and cut it with the scissors. We didn't measure exactly for this and that's okay. We learned on the other side that we wanted a bit more of a close fit so we didn't have to overlap underneath as much but you learn as you go. So the very first thing we wanted to try was to weigh it down with books to hold it in place. Um, we, so we did that on the first side. And then what we did is we went ahead and we took a clipboard and we started peeling from the underneath. And then we took the clipboard to smooth out the edges and make sure that there were no bubbles under the contact paper. I didn't really like how hard it was to use the clipboard so I had Christina go and grab a credit card just because it was a little bit smaller and tougher because the clipboard just did not have a very good edge on it. So we went in with the credit card and that did a lot better and this was a pretty tedious process to go slowly and make sure there were no bubbles but if you're planning to use it for a while it's worth it for sure using like attention to detail. So Christina would just peel the plastic layer underneath as I would go probably two to three inches at a time and I would just go side to side and try to get all of the bubbles out. Also I feel like I need to just say we've never done this before so we really were just reading the back of the directions and we had looked up a couple YouTube videos. It's pretty easy to figure out yourself and honestly contact paper is so cheap you really can't mess it up and it wasn't that bad. It just took a lot of time basically. Then we had to figure out how we wanted to tackle the sides and basically I just used a credit card and tried to pull the contact paper down with my hand and then push it down with the credit card to get the bubbles out but we just wanted it to get tight so that we could do the corners and then come back to the sides. But we just wanted to make sure that it was stuck down so we didn't have any bubbles right when we were doing the corners. This was definitely the least enjoyable part because it was hard to get it to stick on the side for sure. So this view that you're seeing here was definitely one of the most challenging parts was getting the corners to look good. So we just took an X-Acto knife and we took it at a 45 degree angle down from the corner of the table with our sharpest blade and just pulled it straight down just like you can see. And we did that so that we could fold one side over and I'll show you here in a second exactly how we did it. So 
So what I'm doing here is I'm peeling one part of it away and I'm sticking it to the table just to get it out of the way so that I can work on that left side. And basically what I did is I smoothed it down with the credit card as smooth as I could get it and then I folded the corner down at the 45 degree angle going with just how we cut it. So we pushed that part down on the table, used the credit card to get the bubbles out and then I went in with scissors to get some of the excess off so that it wasn't a lot of extra material underneath of the table and that helped it fold under a lot easier. I also went down at an angle so that it would fold without being like a ton of creases and being super boxy and um, bulky. At this point, Christina had to kind of lay down and get some of that excess off from underneath because we didn't measure perfectly, so she used the X-Acto knife to trim some of it so that we weren't having a ton of excess contact paper and we were just having to stick it to the underneath. That's what she's doing here. And then I go in and I smooth it down afterwards to make sure that all of the bubbles are gone. And you're just going to cut like straight down like that and then down here go like that. As you heard in that last clip for the second part of the corner, you're going to take it straight down to the end of the table and then once you've reached the end of the corner, you're going to cut to the right at a 45 degree angle so that you can tuck it under. Then before I'm pulling the corner down, I wanted to make sure that the sides were really well laid down and there were no bubbles so that the corner wouldn't peel up. So I'm just pushing down with the credit card all along the side to make sure that we're all good, no bubbles, it's going to stick. I went ahead and recorded this other corner as well so you can see it another time because this really was kind of the trickiest part to make look good. So all we did was fold it and then cut it down at a 45 degree angle from the table and then we're folding one side up and out of the way so that we can access the other side. Just like that you can stick it to itself. And then we're using the credit card to smooth down the side so that the corner is going to go down nicely and lay perfectly flat. And then all we're doing is going to move on to the other side and do literally the exact same thing. Update. Last corner. Uh, right? Cut the finger? Yeah, it's last. Yeah, I'm going to cut it. Uh, I was closing my X-Acto knife and like when I did it like when it closed the tip sliced my, my finger. We had to get the blow dryer out because it wasn't sticking as well on this side so almost done. All right y'all marble DIY is complete. If you like this tutorial give it a thumbs up. Leave us a comment. Thank you minion. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys.